Hey everybody, it's Jaren. I just wanted to get on here with an encouragement today. I wanted to talk to people who are in a season of transition currently. You know that God is elevating you to the next level, the next season in your life. And right now there's just a lot going on. And I just wanted to say that in seasons, you know, in, in every season of our lives, it's important that we are always being led by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we're really listening to the Lord for his direction, but it is pertinent in seasons of transition that we really press in and really listen for what the Holy Spirit uh, wants us to do. Because whenever we're in seasons of transition, the devil often does whatever he can to try to hold us back and keep us where we were before. And there's just a lot of chaos. There tends to be a lot of chaos and we can be tempted sometimes to take matters into our own hands and lead ourselves. And that's not what God wants us to do. We will never get to the next season of our life unless we are surrendered to the Lord's will and surrendered to his voice, you know, hearing his voice and obeying his voice. Um, I was talking to somebody close to me the other day and it came to mind um, this passage from a book called Calling by Jen Tringale. Um, she was talking about how most accidents happen at places of intersections, you know, at, at intersections on, on the road and stuff. And, you know, at, at intersections, there tends to be a lot going on. There's a lot of different variables, you know. Um, and if you're not paying attention to your surroundings, if you're careless, you can have an accident, you know. Um, and so it is really, really important that when Satan throws this whirlwind at you of just things back to back, that you stand on what it is that God told you to do, whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you, you know, whatever it is that the Lord told you so that you can keep your faith up, you have to stand on that. You know, if I can just use an example from the Bible, uh, that God used for me, for my situation. Um, it, I believe it was after, after the Jesus fed the 5,000 and he told the disciples, uh, let's get in this boat. Let's go to the other side. Oh wait, no, it wasn't. That was, that was when he was walking on water. This is, this was a different time. He was just like teaching and he was like, oh yeah, let's cross to the other side. Anyway, and they're on the boat and this sudden storm comes out of nowhere and it was threatening to capsize the boat and the disciples were afraid that they were going to drown. And so they're <laughs> like, Jesus, you need to get up <laughs> you need to get up because we are literally about to die. You don't care. You just go sleep. You just, you just go, you just go lay there. Oftentimes we get in these situations, right? We're in a crisis and we think everybody else should be panicking too. And especially God, we think just because we're riled up and we're, uh, you know, we're worked up that God should be worked up too. And it, you look at God, it's like, God, how can you not be moving at a, at a time like this? You know, you just go, you just go sleep. You know, um, and so Jesus gets up and he rebukes the wind and the waves and he told them, he was like, where's your faith? So in the past, the stern of the boat was where the captain would have his sleeping quarters. So for Jesus to be asleep, now I don't know how he was able to sleep in a storm like this. <laughs> like he must have been tired, okay? Um, but for for him to sleep, in the stern while all this is going on it just represents the the epitome of jesus being in control and that really just goes back to our situation you know whatever we're going through god is in control he's in control you know he just because it looks like he's not doing anything he's not moving does not mean that he does not have the power to do what needs to be done or it doesn't mean that he doesn't care um you know sometimes it can make us feel alone or that jesus doesn't care when we're going through these things and we're looking at him like you could stop this at any time but you're not why you know 
And, um, you know, it's easy to look at the disciples and be like, yeah, they should have had faith. You know, they really should have believed. But oftentimes we really find ourselves in these situations too. God may have told you he was going to uh, repair and restore your marriage. God may have told you that he was going to restore your health, that he was going to do this for your finances, that something that happened to you before, um, a cycle of things that you've been in was never going to happen again. But between that promise and the manifestation of that promise, circumstances arise that threaten the validity of that promise, you know? So in, in the, in the disciples case, Jesus said, we're going to the other side, but this storm came up out of nowhere and threatened the validity of that statement that we will reach the other side. So they were afraid. They were concerned with what they saw instead of God's word. And that is, that is what we need to stand on all the time because the devil will throw things at us all the time to try to get our focus off of God's word. But you have to build that firm foundation in Christ because when everything else is moving around, God's not going to move. I told you guys, I think in the last video, uh, when God was saying to me, well, what would you be doing if you weren't worrying? And I, I, I replied, I was like, nothing. And he was like, all right, then do nothing. And I was like, okay, good talk. Thanks. Um, and then a few days later I had gone to him and I was like, God, like, you know, after getting new information again, like a little storm came up and I was like, God, I don't know what to do. What do I do? And God was like, well, what's the last thing I told you to do? And I said, you said, do nothing. And he was like, all right, well, I didn't tell you anything new. So do nothing. <laughs> and so, um, you know, God is your foundation. And so just keep your ear inclined to his voice, you know, um, because there's so many different variables and God will, or excuse me, Satan will try to throw anything he can at you to get your focus off of God and off of his word, you know? So whatever it is that God has promised you and he's given you confirmation over and over and over again, I just want to increase your faith and tell you that it will happen. God will do what he said he is going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or even imagine. God is going to do it because he is not a liar and he cares about you. <laughs> God is accelerating things. So thank you so much for uh, listening and thank you for everybody who prayed for me. I really appreciate it. God really, um, you know, he, he removed those, those people who were trying to hold me back. So, you know, I am really grateful for that. Um, I'm still praying about other things that I need God to come through for me on, but I thank you guys for your prayers and I know that they're working and, um, please send me, uh, an email if you have any prayer requests or anything that you'd just like to talk about. Um, any testimony that you have to share, I'd love to hear from you guys. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a good day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.